Hi guys, I am Laura Goodwin and you're watching Laura X Annie. Today I'm here with my Me Before You movie review. I went to go see it on Saturday with my birth mum Jan and it was pretty awesome. I cried, I laughed, I cried some more, then I laughed some more and I just felt absolutely heartbroken. Up here I have one of my favourite quotes, this is actually a quote from the book and it says, you don't have to let the result of one mistake be the thing that defines you. You, Clark, have the choice not to let that happen. So as you can see, I do like to write my quotes up on the board just to show you. I also, the minute I, this is how good the film was, the minute I came out the film, I may or may not have went and bought the book. So I now have me before you. I'm currently 46 pages in because I started reading it on the train and I was like, you know, finishing it and it said, you're now approaching Prestwick Town. And I was like, oh, I have to get off at Newton and Air. She'd really put this book down. So yeah, it's a really, really touching movie. So the plot of the movie, if you didn't know, is about this guy called Will Trainer, who has become a quadriplegic after a motorcycle accident. Now, what I love, by the way, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, duh, it's a movie review, there's gonna be spoilers. So at the start of the film, you see Will as he was before the accident with his then girlfriend, Alicia, or Alicia, I can't remember her name, but yeah, her. And um, he goes to get his bike helmet and she says, not a chance. It's pissing down, so don't get it. Basically, I'm kind of trying to get the words out. And he goes, fine. So he goes out to get the car, and he tries to go get a taxi, and he's running across the road in the rain, and suddenly a mo motorbike comes, and it smacks right into him. And it's a spinal cord injury. So then two years later, we find Louisa Clark, played by Amelia Clark. Um, also, Will Trainer is played by Sam Kathleen. So, you see Louisa Clark and she has a big family. Her mum and her dad is played by Brendan Coyle and her sister uh, Trina, Trina, is it Trina? Is played by Jenna Louise Coleman. And they need the money and basically what happens is that the guy she's worked for for six years now um, is moving back to Australia and has closed up his shop so he um, she's made redundant so she has to go back to the job centre and she has to go and try and find a job and she goes through all these different jobs until she gets as she's sitting down a thing comes in and it turns out that they need a caregiver for Will and it's quite funny because she goes and he's sort of an asshole to her, he doesn't talk to her, she comes in with all these cute shoes and stuff like that and then she starts to you know get him to open up and they share some really cute moments and everything like that and it's really after um, they sit and watch a movie together that it sort of becomes a thing and then she also has a boyfriend at the time and his name's Patrick and he's played by the guy that played Neville Longbottom and if anyone wants to talk about puberty like who did well in puberty Neville Longbottom Neville freaking Longbottom like I remember him in Harry Potter like I always thought oh Neville's basically me he's a bit chubby he's a, he should probably be in Hufflepuff blah 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 and then you actually look at him now and you're like hot freaking damn so yeah, and it just goes on and on and on and it's such a beautiful movie and you really, really root for Will and Lou from the start of the film and from when they start when they start to get together, like you can see and then his ex-girlfriend comes back and now she's getting married to his best friend, so they go to the wedding and it's actually such a beautiful the cinematography for it was absolutely stunning and just you root from them from the start, you want Will to say I'll continue with my life for you and stuff and they kiss and you know they begin this lovely thing when they're on holiday because he takes her, she takes him away, she goes take, I need to take you away. He gave his family six months and then he wanted to have an assisted suicide in Switzerland. 
so he th so Louise thinks Louisa th Lou thinks that she can change Will's mind by doing showing him all the things that he loved to do that he can still do like going to the racing going on holiday but you really want that to happen and for moments in the film you do think yes it's gonna happen it's gonna happen you know Will's gonna say yes I'll stay for you I'll stay for you um but it becomes clear towards the end of the film that that's not happening and you still wish and you hope for it you still push on and on and on and I didn't know the end of the film at all I didn't know before I went into this the end of the film I had a funny inkling but I didn't think it was real and then he says that he's going away and he's going to do it and it's when they're on the beach and he's basically saying, you, you, you know, you can't be stuck with me, you can't be stuck with me. And she starts crying and it breaks my heart because Lou basically gets off his lap and goes, you're being so selfish, you're being so selfish and basically goes back and packs and they all leave back together. And it was their last night there and um, you just see that she's heartbroken because she just wants Will to have this amazing life that she knows that she can give him. But obviously he doesn't want that and you know I saw a lot of protesters at the premiere for the film talking about a lot about your Jojo Mize who not only wrote the book but she also wrote the screenplay which I think makes it so true to the book because she herself wrote the screenplay it's very much like um, Perks of Being a Wallflower which was written by Stephen Shabosky who also wrote the screenplay for the film which I think a lot of writers should start to do. You should write the screenplay for the film because then it'll be more true to your book than getting someone else to come in and change different bits of it. And a lot of protesters were saying, you're basically saying that it's better for us to die than to live. That's not what Jojo is saying. Will had this amazing life. He used to go cliff diving. He used to do this, he used to do that. and. He doesn't want to be stuck in this chair and you can see that it has really, really affected him. He's tried to take his life before, this isn't the first time um, and he just can't keep on living and it's probably different with every single quadrupedic case that there is in the world. Some want to continue with their lives and show and prove that they can do this but Will um, is a very different character and it should never be shown that Oh, Jojo Mice isn't trying to say that every person that's a quadriplegic wants to die. This is just Will and it goes with the plot of her film and I do think it's very realistic in the way I've never had any experience with quadrupedia but I do tell, I can see Will's point of view that he just can't, can't go on any longer and he doesn't want Amelia to be stuck. She's already been stuck in this town for so, so freaking long and he doesn't want, I'm gonna cry, and he doesn't want her to be stuck with him. Um, so what I think is it's very beautiful and like he said, he can't do all the things he wants to do to her. He can't hold her, he can't, you know, and there was a beautiful bit at the end of the film where I cried and there was, he was talking, he was crying as well, Sam Catholic, and they were chatting and he was going, I was when he was saying that he didn't want her to, he's like, I can't do what I want to do you and you wouldn't understand, Clark, how much I want you. But I can't do that and that's basically, you know, a young boy, he's only in his 20s and that's, that's the thing, like, he, he, he thinks, you know, you say you have your life ahead of you, he technically doesn't because he doesn't think he has his life ahead of him, not the life that he had and that's essentially what he wanted was the life that he had because he freaking loved his life and now he can't adjust to the life that he has now so he decides an assisted suicide and at the end of the film Lou comes and lies with him and is there with him when he dies which I think is beautiful and poignant and I think it was something very special because she didn't want to, she wasn't originally going to do it it wasn't until her sister said that she had to do it and she had to go and she did and she was with him and then he made sure that she had enough money to go to Paris and go do all the things that she wants to do and she's going to go back, you know, and it helps her parents with money so that she can go and do whatever she wants to do and, you know, she wants to study fashion and she's going to do it. The sequel to the book, 
the book, there's another book coming out and it came out last year so I'm quite looking forward to getting a hold of the book and yeah so that's basically it I have maybe rambled for about 12 minutes but it was such a beautiful film 10 out of 10 can't wait to have it on DVD cannot wait to finish the book I am very excited so yeah thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you on Thursday with another video bye